We're looking today at the final messages that Jesus leaves his people. And uh, we begin in verse 13 with a, a comment by Christ himself who says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. All three of these titles have been used in, throughout the book of Revelation in reference both to the Father and the Son. Depending on the context, you'll find both being called these things. And uh, so let's look at them very quickly. We know Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. The book of Revelation was written in Greek, and so it was, very, it was a common language of the time. People would know what that meant. So from the beginning to the end, uh, everything in between, uh, Jesus is that. He encompasses all things. He reinforces that by saying the first and the last. Uh, he, it's a very similar way of saying the same thing, but he's the one who is first of all things. He is, for, he is preeminent over all things. He's preeminent over creation, over the church, over humanity, over angels, over everything. And he's the creator of all things as well. So being the first, uh, he is the one who created all things that follow after. He is also the last. He's the one that is going to bring everything to an end. We find found in chapter 21 that he is going to create, destroy the have present heavens and earth and create a new heavens and earth. He is the last. He brings it all to a conclusion. And then the beginning and the end, uh, again, very similar overlapping ideas, but in case anybody missed it, he is the first of all things. He is the ending of all things. He is the sustainer of all things. That's Jesus Christ. What a, what a beautiful description of who he is. And this flows all the way back to the first chapter of the book uh, where these kind of titles are being used. He moves on to, uh, once again, another blessing. This is the seventh blessing, I believe, found in the book of Revelation. Seven different, seven different times it says so-and-so or someone is blessed uh, for particular reasons. So we have one of those here. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Now, if we go back to chapter 1 for just a moment, we find the first blessing is in verse 3 of chapter 1. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it, for the time is near. Now, we, we looked at this a couple of days ago, but the, I want to reiterate the idea that the blessing is found, a, ble a blessing is pronounced on those who both read and heed or uh, obey uh, the words of this prophecy. I don't think there's any other book in Scripture that gives quite that same kind of promise, a blessing, uh, a prosperity in the sense that we are a favored before God, prosperous before God. And it's a promise to all those who, who read the words of this book. Some people have ignored the book of Revelation. They find it difficult to understand. They find the symbolism overwhelming. Uh, they don't catch the meaning. And yet it is the only book in the scriptures that promises that when we read it, uh, we're looking forward to a blessing. But that reading must be accompanied by heeding our obedience. So you have to read it and obey it to receive the blessing that God promises here. We don't want to simply be hearers of the word, but doers of the word, as James tells us in the first chapter of his epistle. So we have this blessing in verse 14. Who is it, who is it for? For those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. So these are the redeemed. These are the ones who have been, who've had their sins washed They've been uh, regenerated, they've been renewed, they've been redeemed by the Lord so that they have the right to the tree of life uh, that we looked at earlier in this chapter. And also we enter into the gates of the city. Uh, now we've already seen that those who enter into the eternal city, the final new Jerusalem, are only the righteous. And so blessed are those who are righteous uh, for they will enter into the kingdom of the Lord. What a blessing that is. Uh, by contrast, verse 15, there is a curse. Uh, scripture often does this. We think of back in the, the book of Deuteronomy where there was a series of blessings and curses that uh, God, God had the people reiterate concerning their own nation of Israel. But here we have the curse. Outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the immoral persons and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices lying. So those who do not know the Lord, and their lifestyle shows it. Uh, not that they that anybody ever becomes completely sinless, but we're talking about people here whose, 
whose lifestyle is identified by sins. This is who they are. This is their nature. He says such people will not enter into the city. Instead, uh, we find that they are cursed. And so there are two different groups of people here. Those who are blessed because they have followed uh, the Lamb of God and had, have had their sins washed and cleansed, and those who are cursed because they've rejected the Lord, have not followed Him, and continue to live in their sins so that their life is identified by their sins. We'll pick up uh, our, our study here in verse 16 tomorrow. We hope that you can join us.